All right, so today we're gonna to be looking at a piece from XTA. It's the MX36, it's a console switcher that we picked up a few months ago. And as you can see, we've got a few consoles out here that we're gonna show you guys how it works. But before we get into that, and a long explanation of how we're doing all of the, uh, I guess, the competition of consoles, we're just gonna show you the piece itself. So it's made by XTA, which is known for making just some great processing equipment and just great preamps. And on the front, you can see we have a uh, microphone input, an eighth inch stereo line input. We have the mic gain controls, an on off button for that. Listen, which will be for the headphone section. Sends to output, which is pretty cool. Right now we're doing one and two, and it's all the combinations. You can just kind of keep clicking through them to get almost any combination you can think of. So we'll leave it on one and two. Uh, filter ends up doing a little bit of a high pass filter and i can't remember if it's 60 or 100 phantom power you can activate up here so you have to hold it down and then we'll turn that back off and then listen of course again is going to be over for our headphones so on this the stereo line in is going to be for the eighth inch there's also out inputs on the back as well and then you have send outs one and two three and four outs three and four and mono three and four up at the top and the same thing filter and listen for the music as well so over here this is going to be just kind of showing you if you're using aes dante or analog so it's kind of cool you can have three consoles with backup if you want to run aes and analog or dante and analog or you can switch between the consoles from aes and analog on each one of these essentially making this switch more than three mixers so over here we have the ABC selection. You can have them all on simultaneously or you can switch. And as you'll hear in a little bit, this allows a little bit of a volume reduction to where it's not just a blast from one to the other console. Then over on this side, as you can see, we have a headphone output, the headphone control. And this is kind of how you can meter what you're listening to. And you also have control for your clock. So as you can see here, this allows you to listen to what you're listening to, A source, B source, C source, or output. And then we have for our clock, the AES Dante and analog for the source, and then our channel select as well. So pretty cool. Uh, the meter outs button, I actually didn't play with that. So I have to see what it does because it actually kills all of that. So one thing I did want to throw in here that I forgot to show you guys is that this thing actually has two power supplies. There's two IECs in the back and you can see if the power supply one or power supply two is okay. And if you unplug one, as you would guess, it ends up letting the unit keep operating. So I did find out just playing with it, the meter out, what it ends up doing when you hit that, these actually become your meters for what's going out, which is pretty neat. So if you end up hitting this, it goes back and it shows if you have your uh, your primary and your secondary for your backup. And if you hit the meter out button, then it actually becomes how much is going out of each one, which is pretty nice. So you have your A, B, and your C uh, becomes your outputs one, two, three, four, which is kind of cool. So we'll go look at the back of the console, but so far it's been a really cool piece. So we'll go over here and take a look at the back went ahead and unplugged all of the cabling that we had hooked up. But as you can see, it's gonna be a mess of cabling for what we're gonna do in this next video. But on the back of it, you have your input over on the side, which is the input for the microphone. This input here is gonna be left and right if you wanted to do an eighth inch or a CD player, or whatever you wanna play. And then you have all of your analog outs. So left, right, front fill and sub, and then your AES inputs, and then over here, AES out, and then you have Dante on the bottom, and then analog in, and you have sources C, B, and A, and there are four for each one. So pretty cool unit, and we're gonna take a look at it and see what all it can do. All right, so continuing on with this video, we're just going to use some tracks that are uh, copyright free just to show you how this processor works. But right now we're coming out uh, both AES and analog out of this, coming out both AES and analog out of this, and currently just AES out of this one. 
So for this part of the video, we're just going to show you guys what it does, how it sounds when it does it, and a couple of cool features that it actually does. So we'll get some music going at a low volume where you can just kind of hear it. And I'm basically using this as a master console to shoot the same outputs to every console out here. So right now we are listening to this console here. And then we're gonna switch to the Midas Pro Series. We'll switch back. And you can have both consoles on at the same time, which I wouldn't recommend. And you can see it's pretty seamless. And then we'll go to the Digico. And then back to the Midas. But what I wanted to show you that's kind of cool is on the back here, you can see we don't have much plugged in, but we have our AES and then we have our analog. So I'm gonna unplug the AES and it's gonna switch itself to analog. And you can see there was just a slight amount of loss, which wasn't bad at all. Then I'm gonna see if I can get this without really seeing what I'm doing. Hopefully this is it. And if that is it, it automatically goes back to AES and you can kill the analog at that point. So now the analog's out. We'll go back in, if I can get those back in. And just to prove to you that it works, we're gonna go ahead and kill, and you heard it went back into there, and now we're going to kill the analog. So pretty cool. So it's a pretty seamless switch. We'll turn this music off. Uh, it's a seamless switch though. And it's just a little bit of a duck down in volume and a rise back up to where it's not a huge punch. But the thing that I really like about this is having this voice of God and the background music. So you can play using the inputs on the back or the inputs in the front. You could have your music being played and have this at front of house and you can actually have your music going off of this piece instead of having to go through a console. So in doing that, you never really lose your music. You can just fade that guy up, make sure it's on, and then fade up the music and in between acts, you're always gonna have music. And then my favorite part at the end of the show, let this thing play, kill the consoles, and then you can completely tear down all of your consoles and still have music playing and still have the ability to do a Voice of God announcement if you needed to. So really cool piece. We're excited about it. I'm excited that it will give you the option to uh, switch back and forth. So if you were to lose a line for your AES output, it automatically goes to analog. So it's pretty cool. And we're not going to be utilizing any of the Dante, but if we had some CL5s or had Dante cards for any of our consoles, that's a cool feature too. So a lot of options, um, kind of pricey, but well worth for what it really does. And it's going to allow us to make some upcoming videos in just a little bit to let you hear the difference in these consoles that are behind me. So the only thing that I will show you, and this was just a hack for the video, I would not recommend this for live use, but we ended up using a split to go into both AES 1, 2, and 3, and 4 off of this Midas. So the little M32 only has one AES out, same thing with the Digico, same thing with the wing over here, but thank goodness this guy actually does have multiple AES outputs. So on the AES EBU outs, if you only have one plugged in, see on C here, it's showing that blink. That blink means that we only have one of the two AES ports being used. And when you do that, you can't have it as a backup, if that makes any sense. So I might can actually show you if I start the music back. Let's get console A back up and going. So I'm gonna unplug one of our Y cables here. So notice before I do it, no blinking going on. So notice now we no longer have the blinking going on. So it probably has already switched to analog. We'll check back here and see. Yep, it had already switched to analog just by me killing that one part of AES. So the bad thing is you can't really use it as a backup at that point. So now that I have the AES plugged in, we can use AES as our main input. 
and have no backup and it'll work on a single. But if you ever have a backup selected, it's gonna try to go to analog because it doesn't have an AES sync. So I'll try to get our outputs plugged back in, use my camera to be able to tell which ones they were, if it's even worth it. <laughs> And then that way you can actually still have an analog backup. But pretty cool piece and that might be something they could end up doing on a firmware update. But if you're looking for an easy way to switch between consoles, it's a professional way and you can lock it, this is definitely the way to go. So we are a dealer for XTA and many, many other brands. And if you need anything, just give us a call. You guys have a great day. Please hit like and subscribe.